Today we are going to look at the top 10 stories of American cannibals. 7. Carol Cole Carol had an extremely violent upbringing and was beaten as a child. This probably contributed to his violent tendencies. Cole was also forced to watch his mother have sex with men, with him in the same room. Cole grew up in California and would eventually go on a killing spree, killing loose women in multiple states, including Nevada, Oklahoma, Wyoming, Texas, and of course, California. He was a drunk drifting around and killing as he went. He was actually caught once, but the police released him, allowing Cole to kill again. Carol then began to experiment, as many serial killers do, with both necrophilia and cannibalism. He claimed that after killing a woman in Oklahoma, he awoke from a drunken stupor and found slices of his victim's buttocks in a frying pan. In January 1980, he was arrested on his honeymoon and finally executed by lethal injection on December 6, 1985. 6. Austin Haruff Haruff was not a violent outlaw or a brutal serial killer. He was a young man from Florida who had attended Florida State University and had a bright future ahead of him. He suddenly killed and cannibalized two people for a completely different reason, drugs. After the double murder and act of cannibalism, police were shocked to find no illicit drugs in Austin Haruff's system. But what they did not know was what they had not tested for, a synthetic drug known as Flaca, which can cause temporary psychosis and superhuman strength. On August 15, 2016, Haruff ingested the substance and, completely unprovoked, attacked a couple in their home, stabbing them both to death. He then began eating their faces. While he was eating the face of the male victim, Joseph John Stevens III, a neighbor witnessed the attack and came to help, but Haruff stabbed him as well. The neighbor fled and called emergency medical services. 5. Nathaniel Barjona After a history of trying to groom children in Massachusetts, Barjona was caught disguising himself as a police officer in 1974 while trying to kidnap a young boy. In 1977, he impersonated an FBI agent and kidnapped two boys. One managed to escape, and Barjona was arrested and eventually sentenced to 18, 20 years in prison. He changed his name while in prison and was released in 1991. Bar, Jonah headed to Montana to continue his ravenous ways. In 1999, he was arrested once again for impersonating a police officer. A search of his home would uncover items of boys' clothing, clippings of young boys, and tons of other disturbing finds. On the floor of his garage, investigators found the bone fragments of a 10-year-old boy named Zachary Ramsey, who disappeared in February 1996. Bar Jonah was sentenced to one to 30 years in prison. He would later admit to cannibalizing the children he had killed. Bar Jonah died of a heart attack in 2008. 4. Richard Chase Next on the list is the notorious blood drinker known as the Vampire of Sacramento, Richard Trenton Chase. He was a true hypochondriac who constantly believed he was ill and was diagnosed with, among other things, paranoid schizophrenia. With all this, Chase believed that the only way to cure his alleged illnesses was to continually drink the blood of animals and people who had just died or at least inject it. Chase's encounter with cannibalism would come with the murder of Terry Wallen, a 22-year-old pregnant woman who was home alone while her husband was at work. Chase killed Wallen and removed several organs, disemboweled her and drank a yogurt cup full of her blood. Three, Big High. In April 2002, Big Lurch fatally ingested PCP. In a mad drug frenzy, Singleton went crazy and killed his roommate, Tinisha Sayas, and proceeded to cannibalize her body. Her chest was completely ripped open and a broken knife blade was discovered inside her corpse. Singleton's teeth marks were found on his face and lungs, which had been torn away. Prior to the murder, Singleton had committed only one other nonviolent crime. The murder of Tsais was another act of cannibalism that came out of nowhere because of drugs. Antron Singleton would be sentenced to life in prison in 2003. 2. Rudy Eugene Rudy Eugene is another strange case. Nicknamed Miami Cannibal and Miami Zombie, Eugene allegedly made headlines for a brutal attack carried out in Miami, Florida. Early in the morning of May 26, 2012, Eugene woke up his girlfriend, telling her that he had to go out to meet a friend and that he would be back shortly. He told her that he loved her and left. He later received a phone call from her saying, I will be late. I love you. I'll be back. It is believed that Eugene at this point also took some synthetic drugs. However, only small amounts of marijuana were found in his system. Around 2 p.m., Eugene, now naked, encountered a homeless man named Ronald Popo and brutally bit 75% of his face, reportedly swallowing pieces of Popo's flesh. Her Popo survived the attack, but his nose and left eye were gone, and his right eye was left blind. 
Eugene continued to go completely insane and ended up being shot dead by police who arrived on the scene. At this point, it is extremely safe to say that synthetic drugs are a bad idea. 1. Tobias Schneebaum Tobias was born Theodore Schneebaum, but later changed his name to Tobias and became a rather eccentric artist and writer in New York. Born in 1922, he spent much of the 1950s traveling in South America and spent months in Peru, only to be feared dead while living among the natives. He ended up spending some time with a tribe called Erikbut and lived as they lived, experiencing life as a member of the tribe. During a hunt, the tribe encountered other people and the confrontation turned violent. Schneebaum stayed behind and watched the fight until six people died. The tribe then collected the bodies and lit a fire, began to cook them and ate them. It was at this point that Tobias Schneebaum took a piece of a human heart and ate it. He later recalled that it tasted a little like pork and that he was not happy about having to eat it. A Schneebaum would return to the United States and recount his experiences in writing, which were, like virtually everyone else on this list, an extremely bizarre journey.